Hi, my name is James Gumerson, um, and uh, and welcome to the interview. Uh, this is uh, actually Earl's Court Gallery, uh, the gallery that uh, is currently that I'm represented by in Hamilton right now. Um, and uh, we are actually currently showcasing uh, my work, which is um, a show called The Kitchen Garden, um, and it's work from uh, from community gardens within uh, within Hamilton. I have been a professional painter probably uh, over 20 years anyway. I've always been doing it, but and and most of the most of my career I probably has been in Hamilton over the over the years, and have always painted you know my surroundings. Um, and so, at most recently, I mean, uh, like I said, I've been working in the community doing paintings of urban scenes. I, I recently had an article in the paper which I mentioned I was called the urban naturalist. Actually, I, I thought it was a good way to describe what I do which is really um, describing, I live in Hamilton, which is a, a larger city. Uh, but I like to kind of look around and within that sort of urban setting, look for the nature in it and how nature sort of lives with, uh, with the urban setting and how they sort of interact and how it also beautifies uh, the urban setting too as well. You know, I've always been sort of interested in that part of it. And so my work has sort of progressed over the years from urban settings, for actually from natural settings to urban settings, and then the two sort of converged, and then uh, which eventually over the last, I'd say the last two years or so, have come to sort of the work that you see here, which is really actually going from the urban stuff to um, actual community gardens in the city, some beautiful community gardens in the city, and. Um, and so I went around to the entire city looking at these uh, sort of gardens and and spending time in them over the last couple of years, especially with COVID and things like that. You know, people have had to stay at home. And uh, and I thought, what a great time to kind of get out and just go to these quiet areas, these places where there was just a few people sort of mulling around and watch people sort of get through the pandemic and those kinds of things using community gardens as a way to uh to get through it and to, and and find you know some solace in doing that so i went around and watched that and i watched the progression of these gardens and that's yeah that's sort of what i that's what this show currently is really about that it's about you know the solace and sort of the oasis that these gardens sort of provided uh to me over over the last couple of years. It's beautiful that you show Hamilton so green and so inviting because a lot of the people think of Hamilton of a more industrial city. Yeah, it's interesting. It's actually actually in that article that was in the paper recently, they, they mentioned that too, that a lot of artists do um, sort of show Hamilton in that typical vein. And and, and I, I that is definitely part of Hamilton's history. Hamilton has had a huge industrial past and it's just part of the history and it's part of the people. But there's uh, what I like to show is the other side of it too. It's as well as, you know, the big smokestacks and, and the factories that are here, there's also a lot of beautiful nature. It's a gorgeous city. Like one of those things is the, the gardens that are around. There's one place called um, Dundurn Castle, which is a place here in Hamilton. It's a beautiful old, uh, old castle. It's over, I think it's over 150 years old anyway. And it has a beautiful kitchen garden. And, and they have people dress up just like, you know, way back in that day. And it's, it's this garden garden. It, it's, it's a garden that's used to create vegetables and those kinds of things. But it's also a garden to sort of uh, beautify. There's flowers in there too as well. So it's a place to just kind of do work. It's functional, so it provides food and those kinds of things. But it's, again, just one place inside of the, of the city that... Um, sort of shows that there's another part of the city um, that is really beautiful. How did your palette evolve hmm. or perhaps change in the past 10 years? For the past 10 years, interesting. I used to use, uh, from a palette perspective, I used to use a lot of colors. I used to use black. I used to use greens. And, and I used to use a lot of colors. And I found that um, one thing I did over the years is I reduced the palette quite a bit. And uh, from an actual technical standpoint, I actually stopped using black. I actually stopped using green um, as well, like the actual color green. And I started actually mixing my own greens because they were, I found they were much more natural. And I found that uh, reducing the color range tended to actually unify the colors, uh, unify the painting a little more too as well. But 
from an overall standpoint, my colors, you know, I'd say 10 years ago, were a little bit more muted, I uh, sorry, muted, especially when you look at sort of work that I did with the Coots Paradise. I, I had a show years ago called Coots Paradise and the colors were much more muted and a little more moody. And it's funny if you, if you were to go and look at say something like my website and you look at the progression over the years, the work got much more brighter in color. The color started just sort of coming, coming into the paintings. Yeah, it's definitely become a little more vibrant in color and a little more bold too as well. What you do is show not just the city, but yeah. you, you're giving us a glimpse of Canadian life. Really, I mean, painting for me is a very personal experience. It's a very personal thing. I mean, and I'm sure it is for all artists, but for me, what I like to paint is what I know, um, which is the community and the, the environment around me. Uh, that's what I love to paint. I don't spend a lot of time going up into the North Country, um, you know, painting landscapes like that. I like to, you know, I walk around the city all the time. I'm, you know, I take a huge long walk in the morning. I take a walk, I take a walk in the afternoon and in the evening. And it becomes a very, um, very personal um, experience for me to walk through the city and, and, and experience it. And so, you know, as I'm walking, I'll, I'll see small things like I'll see the light hitting off a building and, and just think, you know, that's and, and it's because it's such a personal experience for me. It reminds me of something. Maybe it reminds me of another night that I was walking in the evening. It was a nice summer, sunny evening. And so I try to kind of bring that to the painting and try to bring that personal experience and the feeling, the mood into it. And sometimes, sometimes it's a childhood memory. You know, maybe I'm, um, I recently did a painting, one of the city streets, but it reminded me of when I was a kid and I'd wake up in the morning and, you know, you'd run down the city streets looking for your friends. And it was just a hot, sunny day. It was really hazy. And it was just a simple street. It was a little fire hydrant and some bushes and some flowers. But it just had that feeling to me. So that's that was kind of the thing that sort of um, inspired me to paint it. So again, just sort of embodying that, embodying the, the emotion that I have, uh, some of my past experiences about the environment that is around me. That's really what I'm trying to portray for sure. Also, the presence of animals. There's yeah. also, there's sometimes a cat. Yeah. How do you choose these uh, subjects? It's funny. Um, they they seem to happen almost by accident. I'm not actually looking to to put them in. They just happen to be there. I find it's interesting. There's one painting in particular um, over on the far corner there. Uh, it's a painting I did. Uh, so I'd spent a lot of time uh, in this one community garden, and I had been painting for a little while. Uh, and drawing for a little while in this one garden. And then I, I took a ton of photographs and I went home. And as I started to look at the photographs and I looked up my drawings, uh, what I hadn't noticed is there was like actually a cat very close to me sitting, uh, staring at me through, uh, like sitting on top of the, um, of the, uh, of one of the fence posts. And I just hadn't seen him. And the whole time I was drawing and I, I didn't see this cat. So anyway, when I actually went to do the actual full painting, I um I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a painting where you're you're looking at the garden and everything is attracting your eye. And if you look at this painting, it's quite um, I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a big red wheelbarrow and there's, you know, there's some corn stalks in the far left, and there's a there's a, a handle for some implements some gardening influence so there's a lot to look at kind of going all your eyes kind of going all over the place i thought wouldn't it be cool to, to sort of do that but then hide the cat so in plain sight and so they actually they're funny the, the the cat is sort of sitting there just above the wheelbarrow and it's funny people look at this painting and they say oh it's great and they go wait a minute i never noticed the cat and they've been looking at it for five ten minutes or whatever it is again they just sort of i think animals they they kind of happen um by accident uh, they just sort of appear. Sometimes I'll be doing a drawing and all of a sudden a cat will run by <laughs> and I'll think, oh, wouldn't that be cool to just sort of add that cat? So it is very accidental. It's not, it's not something I purposely do. And so, uh, yeah, I, that's how they, they, they come in, I think. As an artist, when you're working, uh, you, you're working with um, shadows, with light, um, how do you work with these? Uh, they are very difficult to express in a painting. I think, actually, if, if anything, 
if you're asking, you know, how I work with the shadow and the light, I think, I think really that's what I'm looking for in the paintings is, um, you know, I remember Monet said it actually, it's funny, he said something to the effect of, you know, um, you know, there's light and then there's shadow and, uh, and then everything else is unimportant. So something to that effect, he said, I'm, I kind of think that's, that's what I look for too, is I love that concept is, when I'm looking at a painting or any of my paintings, I'm looking for the deep shadows, areas where you can really define the form and areas of, you know, high contrast, right? A lot of light and the nice balance between the two is really important for me because like I said, it, it, it really does define the form and makes the painting so much more interesting. You know, I like for me, light, a light that is, you know, that is backlit and so backlit is great. Side lit is great. Front lit, I, I try to stay away from front lighting just because it sort of illuminates everything and it, you know, makes it almost like coleslaw. Uh, <laughs> and it's a little harder to see. So uh, large areas of huge shadow and, and light are sort of what I like to work with for sure. Would it be possible to talk about the painting behind you? Yeah, this one right here? Yes. That painting in particular... Actually, it's funny. I was walking uh, through the Dunder and gar kitchen garden. Here, I'll, you want me just to just sort of show you really quickly? I can bring sure. you over to it. Sure. So yeah, it was a painting I did um, at the Dunder and kitchen garden, which is that garden I was mentioning before um, here in Hamilton. And I was there one day, and they have a lot of these hay bales uh, that they use for different things. They use the straw for quite a different things in the garden. Um, but they have the, uh, an apple orchard there too. And, um, and I thought it was so, actually the apples weren't there at the time. And I just, so, but I did see a lot of these sort of apples sort of um, strewn about throughout the actual, uh, throughout the actual garden. So I thought, wouldn't it be great to, you know, put the apples sort of sitting on the top there. And so I added them in um, after the fact. Uh, but there was a, there's also a fence that surrounds these. So you can sort of see the fence back there. It surrounds the entire garden actually. And there's a ton of flowers in this garden. So I wanted to kind of put that in there. Um, the other thing is, is actually, it's funny at the time, I was looking at a lot of Andrew Wythe paintings, who is a famous American, I'm sure you know, a famous American painter. Um, and he's a watercolor painter, but uh, he had, I was looking more for the abstract shapes. I know Wythe used to look for abstract shapes. Um, and I was looking for these, the, I, I felt like that hay bale was a huge abstract shape. And then the, the apples were such a contrast to that square sort of abstract shape on the left. Um, so I was looking for a more abstract composition here. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, that's that's really what this painting is about. It's actually about abstract shapes and, uh, and just more of an interesting composition than anything. Do you have other pieces that you can share with us? Mm, absolutely. Um, so there's a couple of pieces here. This Overall, there's about 22 paintings. In the gallery, this is a, a fairly large piece that um, I completed. Now, something a lot of people don't realize, and I don't know if it's really hard to tell here, but uh, there's quite a texture uh, to the paintings. Um, they're almost sort of in pastel. You can sort of see, I think, in there, you can see the uh, the textural quality. Um, that's something that's that's changed over the years with my work is um, is. I used to paint, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure you remember early on, I, I used to paint a lot of watercolor paintings, uh, acrylic paintings, they were uh, a lot, now these are still acrylics, but, but they were a lot thinner, I used a lot of water, and then I started getting a lot thicker with the, the work, uh, using a lot more, uh, a lot more paint, um, and I started getting a really thick quality, I love that sort of impasto feel. And it's just something that changed over the years in my work. Uh, you know, every artist sort of changes, hopefully, and grows in their work. Um, and so this is sort of the biggest painting, actually, in the in the show. Um, and again, it's of one of the community gardens in the area. Um, something that I started doing was I started playing with uh, different times of day. Uh, and you'll see through a lot of the paintings here, some of the paintings have these sort of reddish skies in them, like, you know, it's the evening and the sun is setting. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to have the garden in a, um, you know, at night, or, or sorry, as the in the twilight hours where things are sort of, you know, coming down so you can sort of see the red sky there, you know, and the, and the large flowers. 
And so you'll see that kind of theme actually follows through some of these paintings, actually the different times of day. Um, yeah. And you can sort of see that in some of the other ones here too as well. Come over here. Another one there. Again, that bright orangey sort of reddish sky. I remember looking out the window one day actually um, in my backyard and seeing this bright orange red sky. And I thought, ah, what if I go to the garden at this time of the day and see what it's like? And so I started playing around with the, the colors in the sky and then try to sort of uh, repeat those colors in the flowers at the bottom too as well. So they sort of bounced off each other. So you can sort of see that reddish yellow sky. And then interestingly enough, there's another one here actually. Uh, this one too, again, fairly moody piece, um, but uh, there's a lot of things in here, I think. Uh, but you overall, you'll sort of see that red sky in the background. Um, we've got some of the light off of this one. And it's a very dark painting. Um, and it's got one flower, which creates a little bit of tension, I think, too, as well. Um, but you can see there's, you know, there's some, there's some growth there at the bottom or in the garden itself. There's a house with a bit of a light on. So it is the evening. Uh, I'm just trying to get that mood in there. The other one that I'll show you too is this painting. Here you can sort of see walk through the through the paintings here. This painting here is the one I was talking about was um, that wheelbarrow in the middle. And if you look at the painting for a while, not everybody notices it, but there's a lot going on in this painting. You know, they've got the cabbage down here. Um, sorry, the kale down here and the tomatoes. And you've got the red wheelbarrow, and there's just a lot of this little, a little flower, white yellow flower with the top there. And then people look at it for a long time, but what they don't realize and they don't see is there's a cat sort of sitting there in plain sight. And so uh, that was the painting I wanted to sort of recreate. And again, if you look at the texture, you can see the texture is quite a bit thick. Um, even the tops of it, you can sort of see there's a lot of texture on the painting, a lot of paint. Um, and I do use a lot of paint, so, <clears throat> and that's, again, that is something that's really changed over the years with my work. <clears throat> yeah, and then just doing the tour here. Um, <clears throat> another piece, this is a larger piece too as well, um, of dahlias. Uh, again, this is at the kitchen garden too as well. Um, and there was one day specifically, actually, that I'd gone, um, and it was a fall day, uh, and the dahlias were still out. It was early fall. And um, the clouds in the sky were unbelievable. It was just a really warm, beautiful, sunny day. The clouds were sort of illuminated, uh, you know, um, with deep shadows on them, and they were just, such, they created such great designs. Um, and I really like the way you know there's it was actually a windy day too as well so the trees sort of mimicked the wind and the trees sort of mimicked the, the 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 shapes and the direction of the flowers so i wanted to kind of get that create a beautiful design so you can start to see again if you look at them really close they're actually quite um quite thick in paint you can see the texture this one, this one tends to show quite a bit of texture on it. Um, yeah, and then I'll I'll take you over here. Have you noticed actually the gallery is beautiful? It's a very large. It's a big gallery. Yeah, it's if you look at it, I'll do like a three sixty here. It's a huge, large room really showcases the paintings well. Like I said, there's 22 paintings here. Um, and it's right on the, uh, right on Ottawa Street here in, here in Hamilton, which is a, a beautiful, beautiful street. It's got a lot of great little shops. Um, and, uh, and then they've got another larger, another room with uh, more historical, historical art. Which is gorgeous. 
um, again, yeah, gorgeous gallery, really place, really beautiful place to showcase the work. Here's another painting here. Um, kale day, it's called. Again, I love the colors of the kale, the purple kale, um, and the clouds in the sky. And uh, I like this this idea of the you know show showing the different gardens in their processes and their different times of the day and you know their their times of birth and you know and, and decay. So yeah. And now this one here <clears throat> is actually going along the same lines as what we talked about with um, talking about urban landscapes. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll walk down some back alley in the middle of the city here, and you look into somebody's backyard, you have a nice glimpse there. And it's just, you know, some of the backyards are so beautiful with these gardens. And I thought I was walking down one day, down one of the back alleys, and I saw this, and I thought, you know, this garden is such, um, it's such in in a state of being worked on uh you know there's a tipped over garbage pail there and you know it, so I, I really wanted to kind of get that feeling of just everything sort of happening and and uh everything's kind of everywhere so you know what but it's a real typical go ahead go ahead sorry What's no i was gonna say that? it's interesting i was gonna say it's typical the end it's interesting you know you got that red brick that hamilton is so uh, known for, uh, and I wanted to get that in there too as well. So, what I was going to say was that um, what's interesting is that after the pandemics, you know, you came out so well adjusted. Your everything that you show is in such good health. Everything is green. Yes. Uh, you, you, it's, yeah. it's like it's like this garden didn't go through the pandemics. No, uh, interesting. And so it's funny, I wanted to, when I was doing the show, I, you know, so much art obviously deals with the pandemic um, nowadays. Uh, I didn't want to really want to deal with the pandemic in, in the paintings, to be honest with you. Um, I, I feel like it's, it's there maybe just underneath the surface a little bit, maybe. Um, the fact that people use the gardens as a way to, to get through the pandemic. Um, but I didn't want it to be about specifically about the pandemic. So uh, but I do like the fact that, yeah, you're right. They didn't, um, they were unchanged, right? Everyone else came changed after these two years. Really? Yeah. But the, 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 your nature is beautiful. Because you really are um, a well-known artist in Hamilton. You, mm -hmm. You've been there for decades. You've been painting for decades. This show uh, from is so different from what I've seen ten years ago. Jack, how does the public respond? Um, <clears throat> so far, actually, it's been interesting. And people, I mean, the show has actually been very well received. Obviously, in in Hamilton, um, I think <clears throat> again, it's because <clears throat> I think one of the reasons that people have really liked it is because it's it's local. Right, it show it it showcases local areas, and it's funny. I was just talking to uh, the gallery owners here this morning, and they said there was a lot of buzz around in in some of the community gardens here. People coming from the community gardens, um, that the people that worked in those community gardens were actually coming here to look at the show, and then they would say, "I know exactly where that is. Oh, and that's Joe's plot, and he always has that that uh, that sort of uh, that gardening implement stuck in there. I know." Um, so, and, you know, specifically the one way in the back there with the large, the very large one right here, lady came in and, she, and she's a florist and she, uh, she has a floral shop and she uses the, that as part of her, um, her, her way to grow the flowers for her shop. Um, and so people were coming in and they're saying, I know that spot. I remember, I know that time of day, uh, in that, that area, the one with the wheel barrel um there were two ladies that came in and they actually owned that plot uh where the wheelbarrow is and they know the cat that sits there um so I, it, so there's a real connection um locally for it even though it's it could be construed as um you know very uh the the subject matter could be it could be sort of anywhere really 
if you know the area, you'll be able to pick out. A lot of people will be able to pick out. I know where that is, and I know where that is, and that I really like that connection. So I think, but that, I think that's one of the reasons it's been really well received. It was well received in the paper too, because um, again, I'm known in the area for for doing scenes of of Hamilton itself um, and connecting and connecting to it. So, yeah. Have you been invited by schools or hospitals or? other organizations certainly uh certainly teach classes i've been uh, most recently uh you know i've been invited to do certain um <clears throat> workshops in some communities just outside of hamilton i most recently did a workshop in port colburn which is uh, about another it's about an hour south of here and it's funny you know some of the people that were that um that were in that workshop actually traveled to hamilton to to view the show um, you know, I've got some, I'm invited to do some, uh, some, some teaching out into, in a gallery in Oakville. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, certainly I've been invited, uh, to do certain things and a lot of it's been because of the show, I think. Yeah. I think right now I'm going to continue, uh, working on this stuff right now. Um, as I said, a connection, I've got some, some connections, uh, because of the show, I was actually connected to a couple of other galleries out in Toronto and, uh, again, in Oakville, um, I'm going to continue with this work, but I also, um, I want to, I've been also exploring over the years, like I said, we've, I've done a lot of urban paintings to, uh, you know, street scenes and I'm still trying to connect some of those paintings together so i think that's kind of what i'm working on i'm working on right now some um some very urban scenes actually some of the local businesses i've been working on doing paintings of you know storefronts and things like that which is a bit of a different turn for for my work but um like i said an artist always has to grow i think um i like to find um i like to look around and find new subject matter all the time and, and grow that way and experiment um which i think is important so um but in the future yeah really it's just continuing more work i've got a lot of commissions uh right now that i have to to do um <clears throat> so i'll be working on commissions and regular work um like i said i'll be doing a lot of teaching too as well um yeah so i'm, I'm keeping busy <laughs> uh, you have 23 in this show and if, for example, people would like to see more as you are continuing this series, how yeah. can they contact you or how can they see these art? So, you know, I, uh, like I said, um, I have, uh, I mean, if certainly on, on my online presence is there. I have a, a website, um, jamesgummerson.ca. That's my sort of my place to showcase my work, my current work. So they have a new work section there too, is, uh, there. So they can certainly see that. Um, I have my own studio in, in Hamilton here. And anybody who's really interested in coming to actually see the work, by means, uh, drop me a line and you can come right out to the studio and you can see the work and you see what I'm doing right there. Um, and then Earl's Court here in, in Hamilton is uh, is always showcasing my work. Uh, this is just the current show, but they always carry my work. So um, <clears throat> you're able to come here at any time too as well um, and see the work as well here. Do you also travel with uh, your shows? Um, you know what? I haven't been um, <clears throat> for the most part. I've been... Uh, you know, I sometimes I'll put work here and there in certain shows. I remember a few years ago I put some work in the airs, the international um, uh, representational show in Vancouver. Um, actually, won an, an, a landscape excellence award actually for that one too as well. But most of the time, like, because of the nature of my work right now, it's really it's very local um, and it's personal in that way. Uh, most of the stuff I do is is really sort of encapsulated inside of Hamilton. You know, really, it's about. I used to think. I feel like I used to just paint. Uh, you know, images um, to just sort of paint images. But as, like I said, as I've grown um, over the years and looked for new subject matter, I've like to try to put a lot more of myself in the work, um, and I've tried to also experiment quite a bit more. Um, and you can sort of see that with the impasto style paint and some of the compositions, like you see here. Uh, really trying to work in, in abstract shapes. Uh, while using, you know, um, using representational objects as a, as a reference for it. So trying to bridge that gap between abstract and, and representational work. And that's really kind of really what my, the focus of my work really is right now. It's really about trying to create, you know, work that 
is engaging, that's accessible to people. Uh, when they look at it, it's a picture, it's a thing. Um, people can see that it's, you know, that it's a thing. Um, but maybe that it tells a bit of a story too as well, because, you know, obviously that's something that's been lost in paintings over the last, you know, 50 years even, uh, you know, uh, it, the paintings used to tell a story. And so um, I like to kind of bring that back a little bit. A lot of people humanize the paintings. They, your garden becomes a group of people and each mm. or each plant has a certain personality particularly those people who do gardening and they know the character and the personality of each plant. Yeah. They will look at your art in a completely different way. It's like a theater. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that, actually. I, it's funny. I think I even do the same thing myself when it comes to painting. I think <clears throat> I almost see them as as almost little little portraits, you know, um, you know, even the apples back there, they, they're like little portraits of, um, you know, and they have their own little personality to some extent. So I think people do, yeah, look at it that way. I, I agree with you. How long is this show? So this shows um, was on from October, October 20th till on November 19th, which is roughly about a month. Yeah, again, yeah, like uh, this This work is, again, till uh, November 19th next week, actually. Um, so uh, certainly, uh, if anybody wants to come see the show, if, if you want to come just to the gallery, it's a beautiful gallery. Um, the, the people here are very warm and inviting, and they can walk you through if you have any questions, too, as well. Um, and as far as my work, uh, you can continue to follow my work both on social media and through uh, my um, my website. I always post my current work, um, as well as any new you know articles or even teaching stuff that I'm doing right now, workshops. I, I post all that stuff there. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time, uh, both through my website, through my contact email, or on social media. Give me a like or something like that. Follow me that way. And uh, keep in touch. Yeah.
Thank you.